Welcome College Research Idaho students and any staff, faculty, or community members that are joining us to our updates with Lori and Mike, Mike and Lori, the <laughs> Lori and Mike show. Which... Ooh, according to Mike, <laughs> it depends on my mood as to which way it's going to be. If you right. saw my forum yes. with Rick last week. Which was fabulous, by the way. It was kind of nice, wasn't it? Yes. So he asked, uh, he wanted to know if the show was called, what the show is called, because we don't really know what this is you called. Don't. And so I, and you know, I just, I, I threw her under the bus because she wasn't yeah. there, yeah. but you but were I said, there. But I said, I am watching. <laughs> the people, Lisa, you know. Anyway, so enough of that. Yeah. Uh, no, we have a great show to you for, with, uh, for you today uh, with a lot of updates. And our special guest will be Larry Surtees, the director of testing and placement here at College of Eastern Idaho. But first. As usual, I have a quote of the day. And it is coming to us from J.K. Rowling or Rowling. I'm not really sure which way it is. And I asked Mike what it is. And he said, I don't know, because I don't like Harry Potter. And I was like, I can't believe that. But anyway, I digress. I've ridden on the ride oh. at Universal Studios and I've had butterbeer and I've watched some of the movies. But you've not read the books. I've read none of I've read the first chapter of the first book and that was enough. How did you get hired? Is Dean of I don't know. <laughs> if that had been a question, it might have been a different way. It, it's good. It's good stuff. Oh yeah, it's too late, Mike. It's not my thing. It's too late. You can't save it now. Anyway, all right. So <laughs> let's get going. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So our quote is from JK Rowling. Um, and she says it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you have failed by default. So, you know what? It is so easy to be afraid of failing that we just don't try anything. And you know what? We're all going to fail. My, and, and the reason I decided to use this quote is, as you know, I'm in a doctorate program and our module this week is all about failure. How do you deal with failure? How do you work with students who are failing? Anyway, so, so um, I just thought this would be a good thing to talk about this morning. So, um, if you haven't failed or if you're not failing at something, it means you're probably not trying and you're probably not taking chances. And um, to get anywhere in life, you have to take chances. You have to fail. So many people have tried and failed, including J.K. Rowling. She was um, rejected from several publishers. I don't know how many um, before one finally said, sure, we'll publish you. And I'm sure those other publishers are kicking themselves because it has been one of the most successful franchises in all of publishing history. Anyway, so I just want everybody to know, our students in particular, that at CEI, we are all rooting for you, um, and we're here to help you navigate any failures that you might feel like you're having and help you turn those failures into successes. So with that, I'll just be quiet. Thank you, Lori, you're for welcome. being quiet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man. No, that, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you see what I have to it do? Was just, it was just the door was open. And it I was there. To, like, you had to you take know, it. Through. Of course. So, but, but in all honesty, regarding your, your comment, there's so many services that are available to you. And if you have any questions, you can always yeah. reach out to us. Um, you, can, you can send an email to student.concern at cei.edu, or you can call us, 208-524-3000, option four. Any of your questions or concerns can be answered and we can help connect you to resources. And especially right now, we know things are really hard. I mean, it's just with the, the pandemic and everything that's going on. Um, and we have lots of resources to help make sure that you're not failing. So please do reach out and use some of those resources that we have on campus for you. Absolutely. Just as a reminder, don't forget that, you, that any COVID related questions or a positive test um, you can message that to covid at cei.edu. That's very important. And then, of course, there are uh, there's a place for COVID updates, our website. So cei.edu slash covid-19 dash information. And it's on the screen. So if you have any questions about COVID and how it affects your schooling here at College of Eastern Idaho, that is the place. Yeah. And also, so just to talk a little bit more about COVID, I know we're all tired of COVID and yet it's still with us. So. And we've done a great job here on our campus of being able to keep the campus open because everybody is doing their part. Um, everybody's wearing their mask. They're practicing that six feet of physical distancing, washing hands, um, all of the things that we need to do. And so I just encourage you for the last few weeks of the semester to make sure that you're keeping up all of those safety measures. Um, numbers are on the rise. It seems like everywhere across the nation, certainly in Idaho, they are. Um, so just make sure you're taking all of those safety precautions to keep yourself safe, keep your... Um, classmates safe, the campus safe, so we can stay open and get you through to the end of the semester. Thanks, Lori. 
So we've decided to start doing virtual esports, and when COVID is no longer with us, which would be like when I'm 60. <laughs> yes. Um, exactly. So like, kidding, like, I don't know. like in a year. A year, maybe. <laughs> so what I did that was, oh, that was, gonna be, that was brutal. This is going to be the podcast <laughs> insults, I guess. It is. <laughs> Yeah. That didn't bring. <laughs> nope. Uh, so when Nova COVID's no longer with us, then we'll do both virtual and not virtual esports. So we are looking forward to those days. But we've decided to move forward with virtual because we think this is going to be with us for a long time and there's no reason not to. And also, there's a significant student interest in doing this. So we're going to go ahead and do it. So if you're interested in joining the forthcoming esports club, just send a message to me, michael.walker at cei.edu and I will connect you with the club officers and we will form the club with our, and we'll go to student Senate and we will have our virtual esports club. And then we'll start yes. doing virtual competitions um, and looking at other resources. And eventually we'll be able to have some competitions on campus. Also in early December, uh, we'll be sending out a survey to students to gauge which games and platforms be interest to the whole student body. So look out for that sometime in December that for that survey. Yeah, super exciting that you guys that we're doing that. So fantastic. All right, so College of Eastern Idaho is pleased to introduce e-refund, which is a secure, convenient, and fast way to get your refunds. Um, if you would like to use e-refund for say direct deposit for your financial aid refunds and other refunds, you can sign up today. It's pretty easy to sign up. Um, you just, it, let's see, oh, hold it. I was going to tell you how to sign up. That's usually what's on here, but now nah, Mike threw me. There, I threw it for a loop. There's new yeah, information. There's new information. <laughs> I should read. Before thank I you, read. Dusty, yes. for the new information. Yes, thank you. So by signing up for e-refund or direct deposit, you will get the following benefits. Um, it's very convenient. So you don't have to wait in the mail um, to wait for your refund to arrive. Um, and then you don't have to make an extra trip to the bank account after you receive it to deposit the check. Um, it's very secure. Direct deposit eliminates the possibility your check will be lost in the mail or stolen, and you won't have your check returned to us as undeliverable if there's a problem with your address. It's also really fast. You'll receive your refund faster than um, waiting for regular mail to bring it to you. So we are super excited about this. So sign up for it if it sounds like something that would work for you. Now, I'm going to tell you how to do it, how you get the refund. <laughs> So <laughs> this you. is very much recommended because again, all the reasons that Lori just shared. So you sign up through student self-service. So that's CEI student self-service and you get your refunds deposit directly into the bank account. You go to CEI student self-service finance tab and then click make a payment. You log into the payment center using your CEI username and password. And then you click the electronic refunds option and complete the verification process and provide all of your bank account information. You'll receive an email for, to your CEI official email address when your refund's been processed and ready to be transferred to your bank account. And once processed, the money will be deposited in your bank account in three to four business days, depending upon your bank. Make sure the refund is in your account before you try to use the money. If for any reason your bank won't accept the funds, we at CEI's business office will let you know. And if you change bank accounts or banks, remember to update your bank account information. All right, so I'm going to give you a little bit of information that if you're still using the paper check, so if you do not set up an e-refund account, you'll be mailed a paper check to the mailing address on file at CEI. So you need to make sure that we have that correct um, mailing address on file because that's where we're going to send it. Um, this method can take seven to 10 business days, depending on the postal service. Uh, you'll receive an email notification to your CEI email once your refund has been mailed. So two things you need to make sure if we're still doing, if you're still um, having us process this with a paper check, be sure, be sure, be sure that we have your most current address on file and then make sure that you're checking your CEI email address so you can see when that has been mailed and then you can be on the lookout for it to come to you in the mail. So financially um, refund check release will be mailed after November 11th. So you can sign up for direct deposit and self-service and e-refunds then would be available more quickly. November 11th is Veterans Day. So just as a reminder, no work studies are allowed to work on that day because it's a holiday. So they can do their hours on different days this week. The last day withdrawal from Block B classes is November 20th with no grade penalty. Nice. So that means W. Yeah, for sure. All right, so withdrawing from one class or a few classes can affect your satisfactory academic progress, which can affect your financial aid eligibility. 
So be sure to check with financial aid how you'll be affected. Withdrawing from all classes will cause a payback to your financial aid. Uh, be sure you're in contact with financial aid, the financial aid office to discuss your options and potential payback. Okay, I have a few student life updates. Remember the pay it forward scaven scavenger hunt, scavenger hunt challenge is uh, available for this month in November. So you can pick up a scavenger hunt card in the student affairs office. Today we have student senate from 4 to 5 p.m. There's a Zoom link that gets sent to your email beforehand. So just go to that Zoom link and that's how we're doing student senate virtually on Zoom. Tomorrow, the 10th, Tuesday, from 6 to 8 p.m., we will have virtual sports trivia on Zoom. So check your email for the link. That will be really fun. Get your um, On Wednesday, you can get your student ID card from 9 to 4 if you haven't done so already. And the Armed Forces Club will be meeting at 1630 hours. That's 4.30 p.m. Uh, please email armedforcesclub at cei.edu if you would like to join that, and they will send you a Zoom link. Um, <clears throat> Thursday is National Chicken Soup for the Soul Day, <laughs> which is an important holiday. It's a good um, day. For, vet for Veterans uh, Day on the 11th, that's when you, we'll, be, we'll be doing a, a brief uh, uh, activity. If anybody wants to join, I'm going for a Veterans Day themed run at 5.30 a.m. So feel free to email the, the, the group and we'll do that. Um, Friday, Pride Club meeting is on Teams from 10 to 11. Email Pride Club for the Zoom link, pride.club at cei.edu if you're interested in joining. And then CEI Job Court was going to have an open house on Friday the 13th uh, in Building 3, Room 345 from 10 to noon. And this will also be available via Zoom. So those are all of our amazing updates. Lots going on. Excited for Veterans Day this week, the 11th, which is a very important holiday. And... Friday the 13th, are you superstitious? I am not superstitious, but I do like celebrating things. Okay, but Friday the 13th, you're not like, got to be careful. That uh, I might watch uh, the movie. Never watch those movies. They're terrible. I just can't do it. They're pretty should terrible. We introduce our special guest. We should. We're digressing. We yes, so we're so glad that those updates are over. We're <laughs> really excited to interview our special guest, uh, Larry Surtees, who's the Director of Testing and Placement here at College of Eastern Idaho, our first director in that role and he has done I, i'm going to do a brief introduction just about larry uh he i gush about him every once in a while but he has done an amazing job in this role um he's he he's gotten us national certification he's he's sh changed all of our practices he's upgraded and increased our 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 certification load and our types of certifications he is always looking for new ideas he is impressing people left and right and i can't go into some of those details today but um you know we have really done a great job and so his the testing center is the the mayak testing center make family testing center so um just really a great donation from the mayak Founda foundation and mayak family to support and sustain our testing center so we're really honored to have larry today speak with us so our welcome. first welcome, Larry. Thank you. Our first question is well, the first question we ask everybody. So tell us about your background <laughs> and how you came to end up at CEI and, and, and all of that. Stuff. So this is actually my second time with you guys. So I'm going to try to change this up. That's right. We have had you on the show, before, been here but it's been like so months. It's been a long time. So yeah. let's see if I can not put people to sleep this time. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I guess just really one of the biggest things for me is I never thought that I would be at the point where I'm at in higher ed right now. And so that's kind of how this has started off. So um, tomorrow night, as Mike mentioned, is the sports trivia night. I bring that up because I am helping with questions. I'm I love it. This. I didn't and know that. Yeah. Josh Peterson and I are working on those. But that's where I started off my I guess career in higher education was actually in college athletics. So I have this background in college athletics. I'm, I'm really big into the sports and all of that. Um, but when I was in my roles within, within those college athletics things, I really wanted to focus more on the student of student athlete than the athlete part and all of that. So um, started my master's program. I got more into the general student affairs side of things kind of started making that transition. And once I got over here, I've, I've never looked back. I love the athletic side. That's um, my master's and my bachelor's degrees are both in those, but I, I like where I'm at. So, and then um, started doing all of this. I just love to help people achieve their goals and their dreams and everything. And so 
as part of that, um, I feel like a community college allows um, me to, to help students do that in a capacity that I enjoy more than a four year does. Sure. And so I started looking at CEI because this was close to family and the outdoor stuff that we like to do and just the beautiful, I guess, country area part that we are in here in Idaho Falls and in Ammon in this area and stuff. So just that's what this is what did it. And then I, I've interviewed a couple of times. I finally got here and I, I love it. Love it. Don't want to go anywhere else. So, yeah. Thanks. Cool. Larry. That's awesome. So before I move on, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask about your dissertation because I know you're you're thinking about you're doing something with collegiate athletics in your dissertation. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm also working on a doctoral degree. I'm in my dissertation phase and have been for longer than I care to admit. So bye. <laughs> you're in good company. <laughs> we're, we're, Not her. She's like going to be done next yeah, week. Yeah, she'll be done. <laughs> yeah. um, but my dissertation, I really want to focus on, goes back to that athletic piece, and it goes to, um, but still within student affairs and academic services for student athletes, and how uh, travel time affects their academic performance. So do they do more poorly on exams where they're gone for half the week for a game out of state, or is it not really that that big of a deal? So that's what we're trying to, trying to look at and, and find is whether that's that really is... Cool. Um, the impact that that really has. Most studies that you look at that are, I guess you could say similar, really only focus on in season versus out of season. So that's your grade, your grades during your football season yeah. and your grades in the spring, which doesn't make any difference really. Yeah. Um, and so this is more specific and how do you do on things throughout that semester and do you do better or worse than other students in the class and things like that. So you're not comparing yourself to yourself in two different semesters. You're comparing yourself to others in the course and how things go. Oh, that's so, really interesting. Yeah. So before I move on to the second question, so you're writing sports trivia questions and answers? Yes. So is there going to be an answer that is the OU Sooners? Is that going to be an answer to one of the questions? Or maybe a question about the Sooners. The Oklahoma Sooners. We, I am from Oklahoma. <laughs> We have, we have not come to any of those yet. <laughs> um, Larry, 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 Larry. Surprisingly enough, we have not put any questions in so far that we have come to together on, on college sports, actually. It's all been pro, um, pro, pro and some other stuff. Come on. What they, about college no, sports? There are other things in there, too. There's, there's Olympics. I mean. Awesome. You All might, sorts you of might, you like, might, So what kind of sports are we looking at? <laughs> so you might We're look so at digressing. Yeah, so yeah. you might look at Josh and I and think that these two are gonna do like football only. And yeah. that's, that's not the case. Like the Dallas Cowboys. That's gonna be the answer to well, everything. Well, I'm really excited for well, this. That's, that's gonna that's be Josh. the answer to no, everything. So because I've Josh. even I even asked Josh, like, do we do we count things like mountaineering as, as a sport? Because I was looking at things yeah. with like some mountaineering questions. We're we're talking like running, Olympics. Cool. We've got we've got the whole game. Haley has provided a very funny question. <laughs> Haley has provided what? Uh, oh, oh, Haley Mac. <laughs> I'm not even answering that. We're moving on. We have serious stuff to talk about here. All right. Uh, that Boise State University of Oklahoma game was terrible if you were a University of Oklahoma fan. So, hey, 2007. It we, was could, awful. we could ask Haley how Boise State did Friday. Oh, man. Against my ooh, BYU ooh, Cougars. Ooh. I mean, ooh, that was a slaughter. All right. They only okay. moved up now one we, in the rankings. Now we really are digressing. Yeah. Yeah. We are. Okay. I'm going to move on. I'm going to bring us back because okay. that's what okay. I do. Okay. Tell us how you have grown the testing center. And you have grown it from something that was just um, practically non-existent to being amazing today. So have you done that? Yeah. So, you know, as Mike mentioned too, I want to first start off and just say the makes and their donation really started the process of, of transforming and growing the testing center. So it provided a space where say all testing could be done. Um, they say all testing, but we don't, we're not quite there, but we're working towards that. So that's some of the stuff that we've grown um, within the testing center. It's just the offerings that we've been able to do. We are getting more and more um, professional exams for licensure. Yeah. We're getting more tests like DSST, CLEP exams. We're offering praxis exams for the community. Um, wow. we're, we're just growing with these leaps and bounds. And these tests are vital to the community and, right. and to our support and everything. So that's really what I, what I like. Um, with 
with some of the with COVID, and this has actually been really great for us too. With some of the stuff, we we needed more space to be able to accommodate more testing. Um, so we were able to grab or to utilize another lab in this mm -hmm. in the same building and same floor that we're on, and use that to be able to have more seats and then also have a little space for private testing as well. And so that's been really huge. And those are some of the goals um, that we'll get into in a bit that that I really like too is just being able to do those things. So. Um, right now, I think really just the growth is that the, the security issues, um, reducing some of those, reducing um, tests being misplaced, lost, all those different sure. things, which, you know, that happens. So yes. just improving the policy and all of that. Sure. So we're working to get rid of those. Well, you've Good done enough. amazing things with the with the testing center. So Thanks. it's going to be exciting to see where it goes in the next few years. Truly amazing. So you might have addressed this in our last uh, last time you were on the show, but um, there might be new things uh, that are interesting about that. And it's always a good reminder anyway. <laughs> Definitely. So what are some trends in the testing field that are happening regionally or nationally? Yeah. So um, I was going to say, Mike, it feels like most of these questions were the same. I'm no, so innovative. I'm, I'm, I'm such just, an innovator. I'm, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, so the biggest trend I, I see is that obviously everything is still moving towards online testing. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because I feel like we already had this really saturated market with online testing offerings. We, um, as we were trying to find our partner for what we were going to do, we sat through many, many presentations of different companies. And since I would say even probably July, I have been emailed by five to 10 new and different companies that were nameless or did not exist pre summer yeah because they, they saw this sure. as an opportunity so they're saying it's an opportunity they're trying to jump into it and then obviously just oversaturates it even more and, and all of that so um so i still think you know on the online thing is still coming um that direction but um i still see the trends as the in-person testing is not going to go anywhere as a trend just because there are so many different assurances that you can have with an in-person proctor and being there and having that whole aspect um, to it that is a huge benefit. And some of our programs prefer that. Some of our students prefer those um, those methods of testing. And so I think it's that's part of this trend is as everything moves to online, it's still not going to go away with the in-person just because of um, some of those some of those options and things that we have. So. So I'm going to go off script a little bit. So talk to so many students. I hear it. Um, I heard it as an instructor. I hear it now in my capacity um, on campus. So many students are scared of tests. They're like, I have test anxiety. I can't do, you know, I know the material, but I get in there and I just freeze up. I don't know what to do. Um, what, what kind of advice can you give to those students who, who really suffer with that test anxiety? Yeah. So I think, um, I think that's one of the great things about a testing center in a okay. way is it can help alleviate some of that. Because for me personally, I was one of those students that sometimes I would get some of that test anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it was because I knew that day in class I had a test. Right. And most of the time, I'll admit for my undergrad, especially, I wasn't prepared. I'm trying to say that a little quieter. Larry, um, <laughs> I was, I was I'm not, actually a little surprised. Me too. too. I was not as he's so prepared to everything else. I didn't I know. know this about you, Larry. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's. Well, that's so not I'm gonna make a note. Review. I'm gonna make a note <laughs> right now. Uh, you have a glowing review, yeah. but um, just just being prepared to be able to go into a space where you know that you have the extra time to prepare. You're not sitting there and the teacher's not in front of the room and all of right. that stuff that kind of gives you some of that extra anxiety and, and, and going through that process. Um, other great options, um, things to do that a lot of people will do is um, as long as you're allowed for your test to have a piece of scratch paper, you go in and you just do like a little brain dump as we call them. So you yeah. go in, write everything down before you forget it and then start the test. So get as much out really before you can have it all on the paper and then start your note, start, start the exam. Um, honestly, just the preparation is huge in and of okay. itself, just being, being there. And then um, depending on the staff, obviously with the proctors, things it's really good too, because we try to provide as much encouragement as we can. Sure. We talk to you about some of those things, which we'll get into a little bit of that later too. Okay. Some, right. some stuff, but <laughs> So, Larry, tell us about the process you went through to get NCTA certification. Yeah, so and what that is. 
Because like students probably are like, probably, I don't probably, care. Why, why does that like, matter? Matt, um, <laughs> um, the NCTA is a, the National Collegiate Testing Association, and it, they really set the foundation for testing. And it's, it does say collegiate in the title, but I would say they set kind of a foundation for testing just overall. And what that provides us is just that ability to say to anyone, whether it's um, a national certification body, whether it's your faculty member, whether it's a faculty member from a different institution, that we take testing seriously. So we take that privacy so, um, within testing, we take the security of testing um, seriously and that we can use that to, to drive how, I guess you could say valid, that's not the right word I'm trying to think, but valid a course is and how well you really have done in that course, your performance. I can think of a really good example. Like we, so the University of Idaho, uh, now because we are NCTA certified, will accept our Alex scores if we send them to their testing center or to their admissions office at the University of Idaho, either locally or in Moscow. So that's kind of nice for a student yeah. who's transferring or for a student who is local and plans to go there as a freshman. They can come use our testing center and get their testing done that they needed. Yeah, definitely. That's and that's cool. and that's really it's really great. We have some students that might live in our area that are taking courses online for you know, like University of North Dakota is a big one that we see for some of their their mechanical engineering, their engineering programs. And sometimes they won't even let that person test here unless we have that NCTA certification. So then you might have to drive to Rexburg or Pocatello or Boise or Ogden just to get those that testing done. So um, so that's really what it what it is. And the thing that I really liked about it with the whole process to get it was that it really made us look at um, what we were doing. So we had to sit there and have a real discussion with ourselves of how are we doing literally everything. They didn't want to just know about how our proctoring was, what the room size was, things like that. They wanted to know, they wanted how, what it was we said when we answered the phone, how we diagnose issues on the phone, how we diagnose issues through email. They wanted to know all of that stuff. And so we got to really sit there and look at how we can improve those processes, how we could go toward um, meeting the strict guidelines and procedures that the NCTA sets. And in some ways, some of those are, they might be a little bit more stringent than a Pearson view might have or something. So that's really great because then it, then we know if we're meeting these, we're meeting everything else as well. Um, so once we finally got everything, everything done, we had, as part of this process, we had, had to write 15, 20 different documents, lots of pages of different things. Um, it was an intense process. It was very intense. So then we had to submit it. Then they evaluated it, then I got to rewrite everything or some things, and then I submitted it again, and then redid some more things, and then submitted it again. Finally, that was the last time, and then we got that approved. And it was a little bit delayed because of COVID, I think, right? Yeah, COVID kind of threw a wrench in there. They were supposed to make all these big announcements on like face or fa their Facebook page, their Twitter feeds, all these things, and we never got that. Um, we do show up on their, their website. We are nice. on the list. We're like two. You should message them and say, hey, because of the pandemic, so, we need we need that Twitter feed. We need that Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, and they they, mm -hmm. um, they did delay a plaque. Mm -hmm. They sent us a nice plaque that we have hanging in the testing nice. center now, which is very nice and large. And it's, it's just really a good piece to, to finalize the process. And it's a commendation to you, Larry. You really did a great job. Yeah, Thank you. amazing, for sure. Appreciate so, Larry, talk to us about what are some of your future goals for the testing center? Yeah, so um, future goals, I just want to, to, to continue to expand our offerings. I really don't like the fact that our testing center cannot offer exams for some of our programs. So our the ASE exam that our automotive programs take at the end of the year, they're done through Prometric. We can't offer those right now. I wanna change that. I wanna make sure that we can do that. That also goes Great. to workforce training and continuing ed in, the, in their areas. They have a lot of different exams that are offered maybe through Prometric or through a different agency that we really want to bring in and do that. And so that's one of those things is, I, we, we need to be able to test and accommodate those students that we are 
preparing, if you will, and educating. And so that's one of those things that I really want to do is, is to just to grow us that way. Um, I also want to be able to grow the footprint, to be able to have a few more accommodated rooms, have a private space for some of that testing. I, I just feel that we need some of that space to be able to do it. We need a bigger check-in area, in my, in my opinion, and COVID mm -hmm. has really showed us that. We'll touch on that in a second as well. But um, just some of those. Um, we want to continue to improve the security processes. Um, yeah. I think we do a really great job, but things change. People evolve. Sure. Things evolve. Things that may have been cheating one day are not the next and are not. It's just how yeah. things, how students get creative. People get creative. And they find ways around Every, the, everything. Yeah, yeah that's right. Find, and they find a way to push the limit, right? Yeah. What, is, what is, what is, what is, what is yeah, what can exactly. I get away with? Yeah. yeah. So, and so we always are having to adapt to that. <laughs> well, a former, so I used to run a testing center too, so I can appreciate this, but a former um, colleague of mine, uh, Colleen Sorensen, you know, she, she would really drilled in my head that if you have a testing center, there will be students who will find, find ways to try to cheat. And you might catch all of them, but uh, you, if you're not catching some cheating, then you're probably not doing a stringent enough job at catching not it. That, yeah. Not that our students. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that about anywhere. We're like, talking about <laughs> hypothetically speaking. Because <laughs> our students are awesome. Uh, they are. But cheating is a temptation for all students. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're doing things to prevent it. And then if if it's happening to catch it. Well, and it also goes back to what you said about being prepared. If you're prepared, you don't have to cheat. Exactly. It's better to prepare, learn the material, especially for a lot of our programs. I mean, for all of our programs where you're going to be going out and actually doing that, performing that service for the community, whether it's a diesel mechanic or nursing, yeah. you need to know the material. And the best way to not cheat is to know the material. Anyway, yeah. we digress. I, I, yeah, a lot of digressing today. <laughs> I think it's my turn. That's Mike's fault. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I like to digress. Let's well, blame I, Mike. I have, yeah, I guess a couple. Well, the last one, I guess. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Part of the goal um, is I just – I. I really want the testing center to be considered, and I say elite because I really feel like we're going that direction anyways, but I want it to be a state, especially a nationally recognized testing center that people awesome. just, just talk about Yeah. Um, as doing things at the forefront and moving forward in that direction. So. That's really cool. We've already moved that direction really, and the mix have helped as well with their donations mm -hmm. and their expansions and what they've done in the past. And, we're looking forward to the future, what happens, and you're a really great leader in that regard. So I have the next question. What are some COVID-related complications from the testing center? And this is really important for our students because it affects you. <laughs> and it changes often. It does. As COVID often. evolves. Yes, and I'm yeah. sure a lot of students have seen this already, and um, we'll get into it part of this one and part of the next question as well, I guess. But um, some of the biggest complications we've had obviously was the seating issue. We had to really drastically reduce the number of seats we could offer testing on. Um, so we went from 34, 40 roughly seats to 17, then up wow. to 21. So we really had to, to, to adjust that number, figure out ways, get creative, how we could um, offer as many seats as possible in the testing center for all of our students. Um, that needed to take the exam. So um, then other issues, obviously, exposure risks always been great with us because we have a large number of people, even at 21, that's, there's a lot of space, right. but it's still just a lot of time together. Um, we never really slowed down. It was constantly 60, 70, 80 yeah. people in the testing center a day. So you're, with that amount, there's going to be a lot of exposure risk. Sure. And that's really... I mean, we, we sometimes joke that it's like the the place to go if you want to get COVID. But, uh, it, you know, we are kidding. Larry has done from the very get-go the, the absolute best job at making sure that all COVID protocols were being followed. For sure. And I just think that there were people who were coming, even though they wouldn't maybe go other places on campus if they were ill or they knew they were ill. I think people, again, going back to that mm -hmm. test anxiety, they're like, oh, I can't not, I have to go take this test right now. So but they weren't just, even aware. Like, yeah. like some of them were like, you know, I, I think it's not COVID, but they didn't check. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
And definitely. So, um, and then one of the other things that really hit us, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, was the, the check-in process. It slowed way down just because of trying to limit yeah. contact and different things like that. And then we'd have the proctor in the check-in room and then only allow one student at a time. So I really just slowed everything down as we we're trying to get people in and out and, and all of that, just so that we didn't have that tiny little space we had sure. a lot of students and, and, and candidates for exam. So those are some of the, the biggest complications that we had um, or we have, I guess. We're still here. So we COVID's still happening. Still happening. Still happening. Still here. So it hasn't yeah. disappeared in the last 30 minutes either since we've been on. <laughs> oh gosh, it would be really nice. Unfortunately. <laughs> Take care of that. Sorry. JK Rowling could. If you read her book, she would know that, Mike. I would probably know. You would know about magic. <laughs> I would know about magic. All right, I have the next question. We're digressing again. I feel like I'm really, I'm blaming it on Mike. I'm deflecting. I feel like it's me today. Yeah, you deflect away. Pulling us off, uh, off track. All right. Um, what are uh, students' greatest questions that you could resolve right here and right now? It's a very emphatic question, it Mike. Is. Mike, wow. Question. Oh, that'd be a fun question. Right wow. here, right wow. now. <laughs> um, well, I guess I, get, I guess we could start off with the biggest one. This comes from this weekend because okay. we got a lot of this from both students and staff, um, faculty, everything. Proctorio will work. And I'm looking right at the camera. <laughs> it will. It I will. promise. You will not get prompted to ask for a $5 payment every time you take a test. That will get corrected. Um, Proctorio over the weekend, I tried to get with them to correct this issue. Um, to see what was going on, all any of that, but we will we will get that going. I've been in contact with them so far this morning. They are working on it. Their IT Great. team is is trying That's to figure awesome. out what went wrong, and all of that in the switch um, to this new enterprise model that we're right. a part of. So hopefully, sometime today that is resolved. They are hoping as well that we'll get that. But um, for now, I'm still working with faculty on everything, so it will work. It will go back to the way it will, and you will love it. As much as we can, I promise. Absolutely. We'll get there. there are always glitches when we're dead. This is a new thing, right? It's, yeah. It's and we're transferring thing, over to transfer, something new. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a new, it's a new plan. It's pretty cool for the it college. Is. It's a really good deal. It so is. thank you, yeah. Proctorio. Yeah. So um, as part of that as well, another question is, um, I guess we get this all the time, is hours. And we, as we mentioned, with everything with COVID and Proctorio, if you didn't know, um, we are going back to an online testing model for academic testing. Um, so we, if you have academic testing and some of that, you're gonna do that through Proctorio now instead of coming to the testing center. This is in an effort to reduce that contact that we have mm -hmm. um, and reduce hopefully some of the exposure. Um, I really don't want to be the hot, the hot break outbreak center, you know, like contagion. I see this movie yeah. with like little things going crazy and starts the epicenter starts there. I don't want that. Yeah. That's kind of what yeah. we're, what yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. Um, later on the news, Larry. <laughs> yeah. What um, did you do to prevent COVID in the testing center? Not enough. <laughs> not enough. Not no, enough apparently. Um, you're, you're doing amazing. No, no, no. Totally amazing. Yeah. So our, our new hours then will be eight to five Monday through Friday and nine to three on Saturday. And students might say, well, that's just not enough time. But like I said, all your academic testing should be right. through um, Proctorio, which Proctorio will allow you to do that at any time you want. So if you're most prepared at three in the morning, go ahead and do it. But I, I personally awesome. wouldn't, but no. that's what makes it awesome. Good night's sleep usually is a good yeah, yeah, that's usually Four good in one. the morning is good. That's, three. Three. If, if yeah. that's when you wake up and you go to bed at eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would do that? Uh, <laughs> So, but we still are going to have testing in the testing center. Like I said, we still are open. So we're going to offer um, certification exams, still placement exams. If you need any of those, um, anything else outside of that, we will have some limited academic exams. And that this will be for those that might not have access to the things that they need, like the webcam for Proctorio, um, internet issues, things like that. We'll work with you to do what we can. Um, and if you have accommodations still, there's that anxiety and you right. really just cannot do a proctorio online exam, work with us. We can, we can nice. figure out what to do. So that's but, why you guys are so very, awesome because very limited. Sorry. You, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. I interrupted you, <laughs> but that's why you guys are awesome is you have a plan for the bulk of the students. But then if there are some that just need a workaround, you guys are there to work with them to make sure that they get what they need for their testing. Yeah, which is amazing. Definitely. And this reminds me, um, students can go to the library now. This is new as of this week, and I didn't put in the updates. 
Students can go to the library now and check out a webcam for up to two weeks. So if you know you have a test coming, you can check out a webcam, take your test and return the webcam, but you can keep the webcam for up to two weeks, you know, so that you can do academic services. So we have four webcams and we're monitoring to see how, how often those get checked out. And if they get checked out all the time, then we'll make sure that we get more webcams in there for students to check out. So this is an option so that you can do your proctorial testing if you don't already have a webcam at home. So Larry, why is it ideal for students to have testing services? Seems like an obvious question, but I think it's good to hear from you about that. It is, it is, it is good. Um, and I think one of the things that I really like with, with the testing services is, um, and I always really get these, these, these confused because you, sometimes you want to be equal, but equitable and it's just all this stuff. But I usually just say it's an equal playing field for everybody. So you have that opportunity. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to take the test in front of the faculty member. So it gives you a little bit of that relief sure. if that's what's best for you. Um, but also in another way with that in that same vein is that um, you have more time with your faculty member. So right. instead of having to take up a whole hour long class session on just that exam. Who knows how many times a semester. How many times a semester. Um, you have that time outside of class to take the exam. So in class, you're getting more questions um, that you can ask right. the, to the faculty member. They can they can respond to you on those. They're giving you more instruction. They're, they're going over more. So it's really good in that way. So you have more access to a faculty to your faculty that way. Um, so I also like with that the playing field being equal. Everybody is in the same environment. Everybody has the same options to take the test. So the same resources. The space hopefully is comfortable sometimes. So I know it's a little cold. We work, we try to work on that. Um, sometimes I felt like it's a little warm in there, but usually I'm on the minority in that that sense. But um, it's so we try to try to have it a comfortable environment in that way. But in other in other ways, you know, we, we try to make it where it's quiet, the lighting is right, everything that way. So it's awesome. All right. So what direction do you think testing will go in the next 10 years and why does it matter to our students? Why is that important? So I think the future is going to be some bionic chips in your wrist, barcodes on the back of your neck that you're going to have to get scanned. Did you spend the weekend watching Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> I did not, actually. Uh, I just wanted to. Big, I was kind of, always thinking it would be easier to have a nasal chip inserted oh. than like anywhere else anywhere, probably probably because then it doesn't anyway i'm so sorry i will try to bring them back I'm now sorry. it's them digressing um larry no, where so. is testing going why does it matter to our students and where is this interview where, going where, no kidding uh, so i think that as tech improves yeah. realistically and i you know we joke about that but as tech improves and i think what's equally as important as the tech is self-improving but ways to get around said tech um that eventually the online testing is going to stabilize and so <laughs> even possibly drop slightly um just because as i mentioned earlier they're going to exams might move back to that live environment just because i know that as part of the COVID pandemic like pearson view was a huge one on everything had to be done in the testing center mm, there's all right. the strict protocol you have to follow they opened up some exams to be done online um, but I think they would really prefer their tests to be offered in person with all of their strict protocols that they sure. have. Because they can ensure, they, they, it's <laughs> really, really hard to get around the cheating in a testing yeah. environment. Yeah, and, you know, as, as great as it is that you're supposed to do all those things with your cameras and show the room and um, rip up your notes or wipe, wipe off your whiteboard um, and things like that, people can still get around that. You might rip it once your notes and put it down and you ripped the bottom half off where you didn't write anything. So right. Still, so that's why in-person just feels so much better. And I really do feel the direction is, it's going to be where we're at. We're going to have a good mix of the online testing and the in-person testing. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can do everything to stay in line with that, as we have been doing to work with Proctorio and others and, and get faculty to do that, we'll, we'll be right there um, for our testing center. So, um, and then another one, and this one seems kind of interesting, but I think it's, I, this is gonna have to happen because if not, I'm gonna make my own software and become a billionaire to do this. Um, but 
online computer-based testing for math where you can show notes and have your work and all of that mm-hmm. there. Yeah. That to me is one of those directions where I just feel like we have to go because if we're doing so much online to not have math or some of those sciences in the same way. And be able to be delivered to. more easily. It's always yeah. been such a complaint everywhere I've worked <laughs> and no one has figured it out really that well yet. With math. With math. Yeah, math. yeah. I mean, people, some science. people would some say, sciences. I mean, what I've heard is with the complicated math, the way you have to enter things, it's like, I know how to do it, but I just didn't know how to do it with a computer, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. So almost, almost kind of ish in a way where technology improves to touch screens for all, we'll say, where you can just write right on the screen and put it in there. So it's basically and then it can like translate it electronically. Translates it electronically and faculty. So it's all figured way. out and I'll become billionaires. Right. Yeah. So somebody's working on it now, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But if we could do it now for yeah. us and that would be CEI, easier. CEI. And make it affordable. It starts here. Yes. Make it affordable. So okay. the affordable. You heard open, it source. Heard. <laughs> open source. Open source, please. I think you have the last uh, question, Mike. I do. Any other thoughts or advice for our student body? So is it okay if I take a page from your book? You bet. And go kind of philosophical? Please do. Okay. I would love it. Awesome. Hopefully hopefully this goes the way that I want it to in my head. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to share a quote from the great Tim Tebow. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I know, laugh. I love it. You might should tell our viewers (laughs) who Tim Tebow is. So if you don't don't know who Tim Tebow is – um, he is a Heisman Trophy winner from the University He's a sports of Florida. Commentator. He's now a sports commentator. He was not where he started. He <laughs> tried to play baseball for a little bit with the Mets. I mean, it's just Tebow. He was, knows. He was a Tebow. really great college player. He was. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, That's about where. It well done. So anyway, no, he's a good guy. Yeah, very good guy. So he said, "Don't worry about what you can't control. Our focus and energy needs to be on the things we can control. Attitude, effort, focus. These are the things we can control." I oh, love it, Larry. So this is this is why I wanted to bring this up, and I'm going to start just by saying I see all the time students come into the testing center, and I talk to them. Um, about the test and they can just they just they're anxious they're nervous they're not ready or some aren't ready i guess but a lot of them are ready so i'll ask the question you've you studied right yeah you know what you're you're doing right yeah then you're gonna do fine when they come out and they have the biggest smile on their face because they were ready and so when i was thinking about this we can't control what questions are going to be on that test no but you can control what you know of the material that is supposed to be covered for that exam. Right. So you're ready for that. Um, we can't control the unexpected change and move back to online with COVID and all of that stuff, but we can control the attitude and the focus that we have that to, so awesome. to say some of those things and to be able to do the testing that way. Um, attitude and focus, man. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so just, you know, kind of, I guess to close with that, if you will, or, you know, to kind of end it with everything, it's just that if you remember the reasons why you're here, what you're going after, what you're going after for, that can have your attitude and your focus help you drive that effort. And if sure. you can do all of that stuff, you will control the success, which is your degree, your path, your growth, all of that. Um, but don't let everything else get in the way and just keep going. And then you become master of your own fate, and then you which is powerful. So that's what, that's, that's what I have. Larry, Larry thank awesome. you for your advice. Yeah. I think I'm going to, when I post it, I'm going to share that as well. Not, so not the JK Rowling quote. Not the quote, no, because he <laughs> doesn't like magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if magic was real, I would love it. So with you that. It's real. <laughs> With that, uh, Larry, thank you, you so much. Thanks for joining us, Larry. Yeah, thank thanks for so listening in. Yeah. Th- thanks for the thanks for leader. all of your really great answers. Um, and I mean, really, testing is so important. So I really appreciate um, you taking the time to do this, and also for your um, final thoughts that you gave to us and the students. That was great. Yeah, it was wonderful, wonderful addition. So we'll see you next week with someone from Lori's area. That's right. I don't know who it'll be. It'll be a surprise. Bye.